Look, I get it. You've worked super hard on your Etsy shop and you feel like you've done everything right, but nothing is actually selling. So today I'm sharing the exact checklist that I use to help determine why listings aren't selling and how to figure out what might need to be improved. In case you're new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. Let me first start by saying that having listings in your shop that aren't selling does not harm your overall shop, rank, or quality score. It's completely normal to have items that sell infrequently. And if you notice that you have a few listings that sell a lot while others seem to not sell at all, this is actually quite normal too. Etsy's algorithm is designed to recommend listings that are selling more than listings that aren't, which is where your listing quality scores come into play. If you've never heard of listing quality scores or if you're still confused by them, be sure to check out my free Etsy SEO toolbox up here. But in today's video, we're going to discuss the exact steps that I recommend taking in order to revive listings in your shop that aren't selling, whether they used to sell in the past and suddenly stopped selling, or they've simply never sold at all. If you've been around for a while, you likely already know that here on my channel, we focus on science and data. And approaching your business and listings at a scientific level means using a slow process of elimination in order to accurately determine determine the exact issue that may be leading to a lack of sales. All too often, sellers will come to me saying, I changed my photos, my SEO, and my pricing, and I still can't figure out why I'm not making sales. But with so many changes taking place at once, it can be impossible to know what is working and what isn't. When it comes to conducting experiments, we need to ensure that all experiments are isolated in order to evaluate which changes are the ones that made a difference. I like to use the example of watering three plants in order to determine what liquid is best for making plants grow. If we were watering plants with coffee, water, and Mountain Dew, we wouldn't be able to determine which liquid helped our plants to grow the best if we simply dumped all of these liquids into the same pot. So before making changes to your listings, let's discuss the order of operations that I personally find to be the best method of sorting out what's actually going on. First, before you touch anything at all, it's important to determine if your product actually has demand. This sounds like a really basic question, but brands fail at this all the time by introducing products into the marketplace that no one asked for. And often as artists and creatives, we create based on personal emotions and motivations, which may not serve a genuine demand or need in the marketplace, which is fine if you're a hobbyist, but not so much if you want to build a sustainable business income. In order to measure the demand of your product, first you need to determine what your item is on its most base level. If you're selling a beige wool chunky knit blanket, you are ultimately selling a blanket. If you're selling a gold and sapphire floral engagement ring, you're selling an engagement ring. If you're selling a monogrammed slate whiskey coaster, you're selling a coaster. If you're selling little girls rainbow unicorn themed birthday shirts, you're selling a birthday shirt. Once you've determined the root of your product, head over to erank.com and pop this term into the keyword tool. From here, you can see the estimated monthly search volumes for the type of item that you wanna sell, as well as the search volumes of the terms related to that root term. If these search volumes are dramatically low compared to the level of competition you see, you'll likely struggle to compete. And though there's no golden number you should look for in terms of monthly search volumes, as every niche will be a bit different depending on the time of year, I highly recommend steering clear of any ideas that display less than a thousand monthly searches when developing a new product, especially if the competition is in the red. Now, assuming that the type of product that you're selling is in demand, we can rule this out and move on to our next question. Are your photos working against you? It can be really easy to see all of your thumbnails on your storefront page in comparison with each other and assume that they look okay. But remember, this isn't where most shoppers will be seeing your items. Most shoppers will be seeing these thumbnails on a search page next to thousands of other sellers. And if those sellers have better photos than you, it 
doesn't matter how good your product is. A bad photo of a good product equals a bad product in the eyes of your shopper. If you need help with product photography, I highly recommend checking out my friend Christina Nicole's channel, which I'll link up here and down below. Even with great photos, things like color, props, lighting, and your background can dramatically change customer perceptions. So if you've got a listing in your shop that isn't selling, it may be worth your time to try experimenting with different thumbnails. Speaking of photos, it's important to remember that our product photography is a window that makes a collection of pixels on a screen seem tangible. Customers can't touch your product or feel its texture. They can't smell your product through a screen, nor can they understand what that product might look like when they're wearing it. This is the job of your product photos, to turn a collection of pixels into a real and tangible item. And to do this, I highly recommend ensuring that all 10 of your listing photos are filled out. One of the number one reasons that customers abandon their carts without checking out is overall confusion about an item. If the customer can't immediately understand everything about your item, they may not feel safe making a purchase. Not to mention, online scams have made it easier than ever for vague product photos to lead customers to make bad purchasing decisions. The more product photos you can provide, the more you're able to show a buyer exactly what they'll be receiving. So don't leave things out like close-ups to show texture, the front, back, or inside of your product the size of the product, or how the product may look in its intended environment. If you're using mock-ups, be mindful of the mock-ups that other sellers are using. A quick search of the term mom shirt shows tons of listings from sellers all using identical mock-ups, which doesn't give buyers a lot of confidence. When possible, order your own samples to shoot your own photos, or try swapping out backgrounds from the mock-ups provided by your print service to ensure that you're standing out on a search page. You can learn how to do this in this past episode of the Friday Bean. If adding more photos and experimenting with thumbnails for a few months doesn't result in more sales, you can move on to the next experiment on the list, which is price. When it comes to pricing your items, it's important to become familiar with the anchor of your industry. This is defined as the reference point that buyers use when associating the value of a product relative to its price. For example, if I showed you this pencil and asked you how much you'd be willing to pay for it, you might give me a range of anywhere between a few cents and maybe a dollar. But if I told you that this pencil cost $10, you'd likely want to know what on earth could justify this price. You already have an anchor for what you believe this product should cost. On the flip side, if I showed you two identical diamond engagement rings, but one was labeled at $10,000 while the other was only labeled at $100, you would likely assume that the $100 ring was an inferior product. The perceived value of the ring increases the more the ring's price increases, because for an engagement ring, we tend to have a much higher anchor in mind. So the question is, what is your anchor price? How do you know if you're pricing too high or too low? Both can turn off buyers, so it's important to understand the anchor of your industry specifically. It's also why fancy price Pricing formulas aren't the best method for pricing handmade products on Etsy, since the results will be a bit too subjective between industries. Instead, I recommend heading back to the eRank keyword tool. Search again for the root keyword associated with your item, then scroll down and select the SERP analysis tab. From there, you'll be able to view the common price points for your industry. Using the graph, identify the highest price points and try to set your pricing around the top 10% of your industry. Remember, Etsy is the place to compete in quality, brand authority, and customer service, not in prices. So find your anchor and price at the top. If you've ruled out demand, thumbnails, photo quality, and pricing, it may be time to move on to SEO. Just keep in mind, changes to your tags and titles on Etsy should be a last resort and should be reserved for listings that aren't already selling. You never know what combination of keywords Etsy is ranking you for in search, so even if it looks like your SEO could use improvement, never change the tags and titles of a listing that is performing well. Otherwise, you may cut off the flow of traffic for a term that you are ranking for. 
keyword optimization of your listings is a step-by-step -step process that sounds super complicated, but can actually be really easy and super fun. However, teaching this information takes a little more time than what we have for today's video. So if you need a little help with your SEO, be sure to watch my free step-by-step -step SEO tutorial up here. Overall, success on Etsy is an ongoing science experiment that requires a lot of testing and monitoring in order to determine what works versus what doesn't work for your listings. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.